what you're consuming, you can actually start producing to engage in that passion. So maybe your rabbit hole is history. Maybe your rabbit hole is shorts on YouTube. Well, actually creating your own shorts, vlogging, making music is a way for you to take all that consumption that you're doing and turn it into production of an actual passion for you. And if you're not sure where to begin, just think about what are all those time drains on your life, the ways that you are escaping reality, and how can you engage in them in a way that opens creativity into your life that's not passive, that's active in your engagement of those interests. That's how we start to learn what we're actually passionate about. And for myself, I love electronic music. And when we first started the company in New York, one of our team members was a DJ. And I used to talk about music with him. I used to watch him spin some records and mix things. And one day he was like, hey, do you want to give it a try? So I was just trying to watch what he was doing and emulate. And we ended up playing a show together in Manhattan. And then, of course, the company moved to L.A. and that passion got shoved to the side. We're building the company and I got busy with a bunch of other things. And a few years had passed. And I thought to myself, well, that was kind of fun. Actually, I'd like to explore that again. So I bought a little DJ controller and I would DJ with myself. I would basically play some music, try to learn how to beat match, try to learn how to mix techno and house music. But I was not good. And I was watching YouTube videos and trying to learn online. But I was hiding this passion and interest from others because I didn't think I was very good. And I certainly didn't want to be called out on it to showcase my skills or lack of talent. And one day we had some people over and I had left the controller out on the table in the living room. And my buddy David is like, hey, is that a DJ controller? Who DJs? And I was like, ah, I kind of dabble in it. And I tried to like quickly put it away. He's like, no, 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 let's, let's connect it. Let me show you some things. And I didn't know he was actually a professional DJ. And he started showing me a few more things. And all of a sudden, I was learning directly from him. And I started to rapidly improve. And we would stay up late at night, beat matching. He'd be teaching me different strategies to mix and remix songs. And then I started to learn a little bit of music production with him. And he said, hey, AJ, I got invited to DJ a house party. Do you want to do it with me? And all of a sudden, my reverse Dunning-Kruger stepped in. I'm like, I'm not good enough to DJ in front of an audience. I'm not good enough to DJ a house party. He's like, no, 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 we're going to have a ton of fun. Just, just go ahead and do it. And I pushed beyond that limiting belief that I have this passion that I need to hide to myself and I can't share with others because I'm not good at it. And I actually had a blast rocking this house party with David. And then he moved, but he introduced me to some more of his friends who were DJs. And I actually got invited backstage at one of the bigger clubs here in LA, all because he found this controller sitting out at my table one visit to our apartment. So understand that just because you're not good at something just yet, but you love it and you're passionate about it, you shouldn't withhold that from others. You should share the fact that you are on this journey of becoming better at something, of mastering something, and sharing that passion in your pursuit of mastery actually attracts other high-value people who might want to help you learn, make an introduction, do it with you, enjoy and share in that passion along with you and your journey along the way. Another excuse that I hear, and these are excuses because these are all limiting beliefs. When we're doing something outside of our comfort zone, our heart and mind will work together to figure out a way to keep us safe. And we will come up with every excuse in the world until we find the one that our mind and heart can settle on comfortably, and that gives us our excuse. But that's a limiting belief. And another one that I hear is, why bother? There's no money in it. And this stems from this hustle culture that is so prevalent today where if you're not working on getting your money together and, and getting financially secure and, and showcasing all of your money off, well, then you've lost the life. And I think this has been exacerbated in things like uh, Instagram and whatnot. But first of all, that's short-sighted. You don't know what your passions can turn into at another point. We all have to start somewhere. And it's about engaging in these passions, something you're excited about, where others see that passion, and this is where opportunities are created. So maybe there's no money in it now. That doesn't mean there's not going to be money in it later. But 
Also, let's get to the main point of this. Your passions is not about money. It is about enhancement of life. And we are not put here to work and pay bills. We are here for many other reasons, and I'm sure that you have yours, but working and paying bills isn't one of them. And experiencing life is certainly one of them. And you're not going to do that sitting at home, playing video games all day, or just reading about interesting subjects. It's about putting that knowledge into action and creating and to see what comes from the fruits of your labor, right? 